I used to use Z shell with bar level 10k. The cool shell that you always see other people use, this thing, however I chose the more minimal style, but still, I've heard about this shell called the fish shell that has a bunch of positives to it. For example, it's not POSIX compliant, which yeah, I regard as an advantage because of the syntax that you now get to use, which makes a lot more sense than the POSIX compliant one, but obviously being not POSIX compliant is also an issue. What am I talking about? So imagine you're trying to install something and there's some install script that's in the readme of the uh, GitHub repository and it has some bash script that you just copy and paste into your shell and it does the thing. Well, if you're using fish, there is a likely chance that that won't work because fish has a slightly different syntax. However, what's good about having different syntax is that fish is more approachable to actually start making stuff in. If you wanted to make a function of your own, it's probably going to be easier to discover on fish than on your usual shell like bash or z shell. The second advantage of fish shell is that it has all the features that you want by default. Syntax highlighting, type completions obviously, but they're even better than z shell for example. And also suggestions, essentially grayed out text that you can easily autocomplete if you want to. On z shell to get that, you would have to install plugins or at least enable them if you use oh my zsh and you probably do if you're a z shell user. Being a z shell user is actually kind of similar to being an ubuntu user in the fact that you just have a bunch of bloat that makes your thing work as you want and you don't really care that it's a lot of bloat well, the same idea can be spread onto fish or other Z shell. Z shell is pretty bloaty. Fish, on the other hand, is far less, well, bloated. So as far as I heard, it's also faster. And there was actually a video that I made a while ago called fish shell abbreviations in Z shell. So an abbreviation, let me actually show you. Uh, if I type in GS and then a space, it automatically expands into the actual thing that I want. With an alias, if I typed in JS, GS rather, it would stay JS. And for everyone else trying to watch me do things on the terminal, it would not be understandable what command I just used. But with abbreviations, you can actually see exactly what the command is. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Well, that video is named fish shell abbreviations in Z shell for a reason. Fish shell has them built in. It's just a feature that exists there. So naturally it also works better than it does on Z shell. On Z shell there were a couple of restrictions with abbreviations and annoyances as well. So a long time ago I've tried fish already but had a horrible experience because of a lot of things I could not understand or weren't there. For example, the cursor shape didn't change. Well, they fixed it now because I am using fish right now. And today I'm gonna teach you how to install it. So the first thing you have to do is actually install the shell. If you're using a rolling release distribution, for example, Kali, or especially Arch, then you can just install it with your package manager. But if you're using Ubuntu specifically, and probably some others, then you'll have to install fish shell a bit of a different way. Ubuntu is a static release distribution. What does that mean and what's the difference between rolling release? On rolling release, updates come out and are available to your package manager way, way faster than they are on static releases. On static releases, it can take up to half a year to get that package. So if you're using Ubuntu, if you try to install Fish, you won't get the latest version. Now, you might think, well, it doesn't matter, like whatever, but it actually will in the future. So I really recommend installing the latest version. The way you can do that, at least for Ubuntu, is right here. This is the readme of the fish shell GitHub repository, and obviously I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description. I would just paste those commands into my description. However, at the time of you watching this video, maybe they have changed and just running the old commands 
to get the latest version wouldn't get you the latest version, so that's why I'm not gonna do that. After you install Fish, you can go into Fish and you can start using it immediately. And then to change your default shell, what you have to do is change shell-s and this is just the safest way to do it. After you have installed fish, you can use which fish to get its path and like here you go. Then you type in your password and now your default shell is fish. But don't worry, you don't have to do it immediately and actually don't have to do it at all. It's just that if you want to use fish by default, then you should run this command. After you open fish, you should install Fisher. It's a plugin manager. So just copy this code, come in, paste it and run it. And it's actually important that you do it in fish and not in a POSIX compliant shell because there's some syntax here that supposedly requires fish. Not sure what exactly, but it heard if I tried to do it in Z shell. So do it in fish and after that you'll have Fisher installed. Now we get to Tide. This is pretty much the fish alternative of Power Level 10K. And exactly as you can see, it has all the cool prompt stuff. True, you don't have to use it, but if you wanted to have a git status in your prompt, you're so much easier off just installing this and configuring it rather than trying to create your own. The cool thing about fish though is that you still can and I would argue it's much, much easier than doing that on Z shell, for example. And you do that by defining your own function called fish prompt, I'm pretty sure. I'm not going to be explaining that though, because what I personally use is the Tide plugin. This is exactly why we needed to install the latest fish specifically, because if you try to install this plugin, the latest version of it, on not the latest fish, it won't work. Now we can actually copy this and then paste it, and once it's done installing, it will actually execute the command Tide configure, which will let you configure your prompt. So let's go through the entire thing and see what we have here. So we also have the rainbow stuff, the classic, just like in Pearl Level 10K. I pick lean, true color, you can have time and you don't necessarily need to specify it in this configure thing because you can add it later if you want to. So I don't want it. I use, I think, two lines. Yeah. Then disconnected, sparse. Yes, yeah, sparse. No, actually. <laughs> I use a different thing. Well, whatever, I'll come back to change it for myself. Few icons and now press Y. It does its thing and then you get your prompt. It won't start looking like mine does because I actually configured it. And I'm going to show off how to configure the prompt in a separate video, which is probably going to be the next video on my channel. Now to configure fish, where you have to go is your home directory dot config fish fish the folder might not exist but it probably will if it doesn't exist don't worry just make it and in here you'll see this file config.fish for me it's a sibling because it's actually in a different place so let's go and see what i have here i have some key bindings which are very easy to do i was gonna coolly show off how you get the key codes for binding keys but i forgot the command but no worries because on fish, just press tab and it shows you all the functions that match. Well, this is technically true on Z shell as well, but I find that on fish it's more approachable and I'm gonna show you an example in just a bit. After pressing tab two more times, see these things? Sometimes when you press tab, the completions are actually explained. But what I initially wanted to show off is the fish key reader. I run the command, I press Ctrl S. And here it is, just bind Ctrl S to do something. Do something in this case being a command. And you can just copy this in your config.fish and you have a key bind. Abbreviations are easy as well. You use abr for abbreviation, then dash a then the name of your abbreviation and then what it is going to be i have a lot of get abbreviations and it's not even like all of them i'm gonna make more eventually i'm 
it's kind of crazy, but it's actually so useful. But say I forgot to make some abbreviation, I forgot what even command is called. All I have to do now is press tab, and not only do I get all of the commands that match, well, first of all, you probably wouldn't even have a completion for a sub command on Z shell. So that's already amazing. But better than that, you actually get the uh, explanations of all the commands that it can match. Now true, git is a very known thing, so naturally it's going to be supported with explanations, but I'm sure there are more commands that are explained like this. I can't really give you examples on what those are, because I don't use that many programs, but still, you can go through each thing and get a slight idea of what it does. True, it's not gonna give you all the way to understanding it fully, but it's good enough. To set your variables, you use set, then dash L for a local variable, dash G for a global variable, dash X to export, so similar in how it is on Z shell, you like export variable this, you often export path, well for that you just use dash X. And as you can see, the syntax for setting variables is also a bit different. There is no longer a need for no spaces equals sign. There is no equal sign. It's just the name of the variable and everything after that is its value. Technically, multiple values because every variable in fish is actually a list. If it has one value, it's just a one valued list, <laughs> a list that has one value. But for path, for example, it's actually a list of multiple values. Which is why if you try to echo path, you actually don't see the columns anymore. Which means that you can now replace spaces with new line characters and then into less, and here you go. An actually readable way to get your path. But don't worry, the path variable is still correct, still supported by all the programs because Fish does all the magic for you in converting it from a nice way to a non-nice way that programs expect. I actually lied a bit though because <laughs> there are some spaces in some paths and just replacing a space with a new line character won't get you exactly there, but you get the idea. I'm annoyed to no end because I actually recorded this part of the video already but it didn't record, so now I'm re-recording again. Shut up, YouTuber! I don't care! Give me video! Sure, I will. So, two functions now. Usually, in your other shells, you would just put all your functions in your Z shell RC or bash RC or whatever RC you actually want. So we'd expect that you also put them in your config.fish. This is actually incorrect, and you see me bind a hotkey to a function of my own. Well, you're actually supposed to only run your functions once. What do I mean by that? So, imagine this. Here's a function, one of which I made a video on, actually. The reason why I have this in a separate file is so I can run it with fish and have everything done, instead of it being in config.fish. So, the idea of fish is that in your config.fish, or other home slash dot config fish, you have this function directory, and we, if we ls it, then we see all the functions that we have. Every single function is stored in a separate file, however, you don't need to create them yourself, there's a function in fish that does that for you. And that function is func-save. So first, you define the function, and that will only stay for the current session. But to make it stay, or to make it into a file, you run func save and then the name of the function. Meaning that you can source and then the file that has all the function functions, multiple. If you run this, all of your functions are now files, and they will auto-load any time that you open fish. You're actively not supposed to put them in config.fish because that will slow up your fish boot up time and it's like already very slow. At least for me, like that's so slow compared to Z shell. But still, I think that fish has enough positives to overload, I guess, the negatives of it. Aliases actually work in a very similar way that they're actually pretty much just functions. I guess a different way to write them, a shorthand way to write them. You should be using save, which will also save that alias 
meaning function, to a file, which is why this file is separate as well. Same goes for enabling vim mode, which I'm currently using. You just need to run this command fishvi keybindings once and you don't have to run it again. All of these files that I'm showing you right now are my own that I wrote and I leave links to them in the description and as I'll always say, if they're broken, please scream at me because I would know. And for now, while you're waiting for my next video when I'm gonna show off how to configure your shell prompt, you can read the docs on everything on Fish if you have any questions. For some reason, when using Z Shell or Bash, at least to me, it feels like you're not really supposed to read the docs because they seemingly don't exist. And whenever you have any question, you just Google it, find some Stack Overflow thread, get your solution written by some guy, and like, here you go, without any foundational knowledge about it. Well, for fish, it's actually the opposite. Anytime you Google something, you'll probably come across a page of the docs, and then you can read them and actually understand what you're supposed to do, rather than just copying whatever else somebody else did. Like this section, for example, I've never actually seen it explained. Like, oh, two stars is recursive directories? Huh, I didn't know that. Well, I did. But more specifically, I think this is going to be helpful uh, for people who know rejects to understand what that actually means. Ah, I spoiled the description. Let's go here. So, two stars in shells means the same as dot star means in rejects. And a single star essentially means this. So, as many characters that are not slashes, meaning not directories. This is the exact explanation, which is, by the way, by Misha, who has a YouTube channel, which I'm going to link in the description. He makes Kotlin videos, which is a good language. <laughs> that explanation actually made me understand how that works, and I finally got that click. So, if this was video... If, if this was video was useful to you, <laughs> press a like, type some comment, maybe you have a question or a suggestion, definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!